Welcome into a Dynasty Rookie Superflex Mock Draft. We're getting to it. We're going to jump right into it. We are uh, less than two weeks away from the NFL Draft, so we're going to get a lot of uh, you know clear landing spots and, and where players are going, but we're using a CBS seven-round mock draft. So I'll leave the link in the description so you can check that out to see we're going to use this. We're playing in this in this world. If this is how the NFL draft went and uh, we'll kind of talk through where these guys go as we go through them. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to take odds Dad. you're going to take evens. Um, pretty clear cut. Again, this is Dynasty Rookie Superflex uh, non tight end premium and I scale Williams. You know, there's not much to say there. It's, it's Caleb Williams. Number one for me. He's going to a great situation. Uh, quarterbacks are way too valuable to pass up, so that's what I'm taking. Uh, I don't think we need to say too much, but you can if you want, or you can just make your your second pick there, Dad. Yeah, no, there's not much to say, and and it's the same thing with pick number two. It seems um, seems like our man Jaden Daniels, you know, Mr. Heisman Trophy winner, is going to go to the Washington Commanders. You know, yeah. number two, and then he, he should. Yeah, and <clears throat> this guy's going to produce some some fantasy points, you know, passing and throwing. Hopefully, hopefully the um, he doesn't get his butt kicked uh, injury wise and stuff like that. But yep, he's he has the cheat code. He's going to run. We were talking about for redraft. He might be the first rookie quarterback taken. You can make a t- case for Caleb, but just like Anthony Richardson was uh, last year, you know, the rushing ability. And Washington's a good good place, you know. Um, you have McLaurin and Dotson. Maybe they add someone else. You have Austin Eckler there, you know. Um, it, it's a it's a decent spot to go to. So, yeah, he goes to the commanders second overall, Jaden Daniels does. And, and this is definitely how um, the draft could go. You know, starts off quarterback, quarterback. Um, I wouldn't be – I wouldn't be shocked um, – I'll take Marvin Harrison here. You know, uh, he goes forth to the Cardinals. There's some smoke about potentially Malik Neighbors is better, and, and maybe that's true. But uh, man, Marvin Harrison's been the number one receiver for in this draft for the last two years. So um, I'll, I'll take him here. He goes to the Cardinals. And Tyler Murray, I like that spot. So pretty, pretty chalk top three there. It's been the top three since January for me. Um, but you can make a case for a couple other guys. So you are up, Dad, with the 104. Which way are you go in here? Yeah, so this is this is a dynasty draft that we're doing. Dynasty rookie. So quarterbacks are money. So <clears throat> according to most of the <clears throat> excuse me, uh, draft experts, you know, Mr. Drake May is um, yeah. the next guy. Yep. And he goes fifth overall to the Vikings, actually. He's quarterback four taken, surprisingly. Uh, but he's fifth overall to the Vikings. I think that's hard to pass up. Um, I don't. I wouldn't even mind if he went over Marvin Harrison in this draft because of the fact that he, we've been talking about it. The Vikings, that's the money spot for a quarterback. He got two good receivers. You got a, a really good tight end. You got Aaron Jones. You got a really good head coach. You know, Nick Mullins was putting up 400 yards and multiple touchdowns for them last year. So... Um, I can't argue with that. He is QB4, though. So it is an interesting conversation. You know, he goes fifth overall to the Vikings. It means JJ McCarthy actually went third overall, but he went to the Patriots. So now you're in this spot like, uh, man, where do you go? Um, maybe it's, you know, I, I probably would go quarterback here, but I'm just going to go Malik Neighbors and see how this draft plays out with Malik Neighbors going sixth overall to the Giants. Um, He's instantly the wide receiver one, so I like that for him. I think he's really good. He's right there with Marvin Harrison. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Malik Neighbors has a better season than Mark Har- Marvin Harrison uh, or a better career. Like, it's not shocking to think that. So, still a quarterback on the board. Is that where you're going with the, with the pick six? Yeah, I think, you know, if he's fallen in my lap there, again, you know, like I said, dynasty quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, you know. Just remember, um, just remember, the NFL started over sixty-five quarterbacks last year. So there's a good chance um, all these guys are gonna get a chance to uh, play. So whether they're any yeah. good or not, we'll see. But hopefully, hopefully they are. You know, I think it's 
we need a little I think the NFL needs a little infusion of young quarterbacks that would help help mm -hmm. the league and uh, make it interesting for us yep that's JJ McCarthy third overall to the Patriots so um, people are not going to like that landing spot we've been talking about it no one liked Texans last year for CJ Stroud and it was awesome so no one and the reason why we didn't like it one um, traditionally, you know, they didn't produce maybe fantasy relevant players. They had no weapons, we thought, going into it. But then, you know, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, third round pick, they turned into be awesome. So um, we never know. It's not the same old Patriots, that's for sure. Interesting spot here. There's, there's two receivers, two more receivers that went top 10. There's a quarterback that went 13th overall. Like, I think that's in play as well. Because it's again super flex league. I'll, I'll lean what I think is the best player available here in Roma Dunze. Um, he goes ninth overall to the Bears. Obviously, a little bit crowded uh, wide receiver room for 2024, most likely. But Keenan Allen, we talked about it, is like 32. Uh, DJ Moore, he's only like 27, 28. But uh, Keenan Allen can get injured. That, that's a thing for sure. And it might be just a one year thing with him. And then you're you're paired with with Caleb Williams for the next at least five years. So I like that for Roman Dunze. I do think he's even pretty close to closer to neighbors and Harrison, in my opinion, than he is the wide receiver four, which is Brian Thomas. So that's where I'll go. Where are you going here? I think there's a couple of good options on the board for you. Yeah. Um, uh, I think a previous mock draft. Seems like it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe at least 10 days ago. I went the tight end, Brock Bowers. And I think I'm going to stick with that. And I, I think this guy, you know, is going to produce. I, I get a little worried about his, his health. I know he had ankle or foot issues last year and stuff like that. But he... He looked uh, really good, you know. He looked to me. He looked like Kelsey running. I hate. I hate to make those comparisons, but um, he didn't look like a typical tight end, mm. you know, running routes and you know, and running the ball after a catch and stuff like that. And they had this dude. This is Georgia University of Georgia. They had him lined up everywhere. He was in the backfield. He was in the slot. He was out wide. He was a inline tight end, and um, so if you know, I'm hoping he gets into a to an offense where an offensive coordinator kind of uses some of these things. You know, yeah, he on went this to the guy Seahawks. And, huh? Seahawks. He went to the Seahawks in this NFL mock draft. Sixteen. Yeah, we, I don't know much. Of course, you know they got a whole new coaching staff. But, you know, all those things I said where he lined up, you know, Kelsey, Kelsey's that way. We've seen Kelsey run quarterback sneaks. Yeah. You know, we've seen Kelsey lined up in the backfield. We've seen Kelsey do this. So, I mean, if he, um, you know, and I think Pitts could be the same way. I, you just got to get the right, you know, the right offensive coordinator and stuff like that and, it's an inter interesting conversation, you know, with, with again, a lot of people are expecting Bowers maybe to go top five. He goes 16th overall in this, in this pick. There's actually two players ahead of him that were picked, and it's a non-tight end premium. So it's an interesting conversation of, of do you take one of the other two guys? Like, I'm going to take another quarterback here in, in Penix because he goes um, 13th overall to the Raiders. Now, don't love the landing spot, but... He's going to be a starting quarterback for the Raiders. He's top 15 pick. Hard to pass that up in, in a super flex league. So probably doesn't play from, from week one. I, I assume Minshew would play at least to start 2024. Um, but there's a chance Penix is the starter from, from day one. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting conversation of do you take, you know, um, where do you take Bowers if he does drop to 16th, like in a non-tight end premium? But it's also the argument of, hey, you're taking the best player at this position, whereas I just took the QB5, right? Um, or the wide receiver four, which maybe you're going to take next, I'm not sure. Um, you know, whereas like 
do I want the QB five or do I want the tight end one who's being compared to Kelsey or generational tight end talent? So, um, yeah, interesting conversation. Superflex for sure. I think I'd lean Penix and Brian Thomas, who went tenth overall to the Jets over Bowers, but I don't certainly hate Bowers at eight. So, where are you going uh, with the tenth pick? Yeah, I think um, I think Brian Thomas has fallen into my lap here, and um, I think you just said number four receiver, and he's kind of that seems. It seems like the deal, you know, he's got physical tools. I know he's big and, and uh, runs fast and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's only had really one really good year in college football, but, um, you know. Yeah. Doesn't mean he can't get better in the NFL, so. And he goes to the Jets, 10th overall. They have a pretty clear wider seat. I know they brought in Mike Williams on like a one-year deal, but he could never stay healthy. And um, if he does, he's good, Mike Williams. But, um, you know, the Jets, like I always – I've been saying this. It feels like Brian Thomas is perfectly paired with like another really good wide receiver, like a, a C.D. Lamb or um, – uh, even if you you know if Higgins is gone from the Bengals and he he goes to the Bengals and and is alongside Jamar Chase, like I think he, he that's where I want to see him go and that's where he goes to a team with you know I think Garrett Wilson is better than Brian Thomas and I think he's like a perfect wide receiver too for um, for a team you know a high end wide receiver too that could be a top twelve receiver in the right offense so. Um, yeah, and we still have two players. We have, actually have 12 first-round picks in this mock draft. So that means the entire first round of the rookie mock draft are first-rounders in the NFL draft. And that wasn't the case last year. I think it was like, you know, the 109 or so where he started getting second-round picks, uh, 109, 110. So um, now I'm in a position, do I take the wide receiver whose landing spot I like more, or do I take – the player I like more in general. I'm going to go with the player. I generally like to draft that way. They're only separated by five picks. I'll take Xavier Worthy. He goes 28th overall to the Panthers. Um, I think that's a good spot for for Worthy in terms of um, the team. Like for, for the Panthers, I think it's a good pick. Now, if Bryce Young just sucks, it's going to suck for Xavier Worthy, right? That's the risk. Yeah, you're you're risking right there. If you if Bryce Young is just not a good quarterback. Xavier Worthy is not going to be probably not be very good. Now, if Bryce Young's good, then I like this pick. Xavier Worthy, 28th overall. I like him more than, I don't know if you're going to take AD Mitchell, but uh, I like no, him more than AD Mitchell. But I'm going to, I'm going to scoop because <clears throat> I think this guy's going to play. Um, and I'm assuming he's getting drafted by a certain team. And I'm talking about, Bo Nix. Oh, nice. That was yeah, not expecting that. Yeah, well, it, it, even even if he goes again, we're living in the world where he's a third round pick to the Broncos. Is that yeah? That's okay I'm, not, with you? I, I, I'm not sure he's going to last the third round into the but Broncos. If, but that's if the it team. played out this way. What's that? We're we're just saying if it played out this way, right? Like this is how it, how it happens on the draft day. Are you still taking Bo Nix? In the first yeah. Round, if he's a well, uh, pick. yeah. I don't. I don't know. A quarter. A quarter. You know, st we're still talking dynasty. It's. It's hard to get. It's hard to get quarterbacks. You know, and you know, mm -hmm. in this. I'm just saying. If if he's there, and I and I think he's on the Broncos, I'd take him. I you know. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, again, we're living in this world, so Bo Nix is a third-round pick. 66 overall, so a very high third-round pick. He goes to the Broncos, which, honestly, like he has a chance to start from day one, um, even though he is a third-round pick. So I think as a third-round pick, I'd be a little bit more worried taking him as in the first round. But if you're sitting there at, at the 12, and let's say you, know, you won the league last year, but you won it with Flacco... Uh, you have Aaron Rodgers and like Kirk Cousins or something. Like yeah. you have a bunch of old guys, right? And you want to you want to replenish your quarterback room while still making a push for the champion. Like it's not a terrible idea if you have a stud. Uh, you know, we're talking about the the 
theoretically, we're talking about the team that won the league at the 112. That's not the case if you trade out of it. But, you know, so it's not not terrible, right? It's just a little risky because he is a third-round pick, and well, there's you a know, reason why he falls that far. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's been discussions about is there going to be six quarterbacks taken in the first mm -hmm. round of, you know, the – and um, – and and we, we know the teams that need there's you know we talked about this yesterday we said this is this is like um you know there's seven teams and there's six chairs mm -hmm. or something like that you know there is so i mean somebody's gonna overreach you know and you know and somebody's gonna left without a chair yeah so so i i just think I, I can't see Bo Nix, unless unless he's unless they're identifying him as you know this guy ain't no good or, or or something like that. But that's kind of how I would take it. Like if this again, we're, we're, we're you know you're saying you think he's going to go a lot higher, and I, I kind of agree with you. But if we are playing in this world of where he's a third round pick, it makes me with the amount of teams that do need quarterbacks, it makes me a little cautious of why he fell that far. So. Uh, maybe it was just a mistake by everyone, you know. Um, here, this is the other guy, the other receiver when I picked Xavier Worthy. This is the other guy I was kind of back and forth between. Uh, that's Adonai Mitchell, who I like where the landing spot a lot more in this mock draft, which was 23rd overall to the Chargers. You know, they traded out of pick five. Um, obviously, like the landing spot more. I like Xavier more, Worthy more as a player. So that's why I went with Xavier Worthy. I'll go talent over landing spot. If you did that, you know, potentially last year, Quinton Johnson had the best land. Him and Jordan Addison had the best landing spots, right? Um, so if you would prioritize Quinton Johnston over Zay Flowers, Addison, or even JSN, you probably made a mistake, right? So don't oh, don't always go for a landing spot. Maybe go with the player you believe in more. But I'll take Adonai Mitchell there. It's not that I don't like him. And, you know, obviously he goes to the Chargers, has a chance to be their best receiver, and, you know, they are going to throw the ball, despite what people are saying them. They're going to run the ball 50 times a game. So, no, um, they're not, they're not going to do that. But, yeah, yeah they. So you're, you're back up. That's all the first round picks. Um, so, you know, you're sitting at the 201. You get a, a NFL real draft first rounder. You're, you're pretty happy, I say. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Mr. Lad McConkey. Yep. That is a. Good pick there. He goes 33rd overall to the Bills. What do you think is... That's exactly where I want him to go. <laughs> yeah. What do you think his ceiling is? Like, do you think it's wide receiver one for a team, an NFL team potential? Or do you think he's better as like a second, third option? Well, <clears throat> I, I I just see... You know, I don't, I, I'm not sure I could label him as wide receiver number one. But I could see this guy getting a lot of volume. Yeah. You know? So, um, slot receiver, this this would make this would make um, the tight end Kincaid. They drafted last year better. This would make Shakur, the uh, other wide receiver. This would, um, you know, definitely help. But yeah. um, there's a couple of other receivers that are – that are pretty good too at this point. So yeah, but I'm going to take uh, one of them, Troy Franklin. I really like him from Oregon. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people saying like he, he, Oregon's offense was obviously really good. He was stretching the field for them. I think he's more than that. I think he can be a complete receiver. He goes to the Bengals 49th overall. And how I interpret that is you're probably getting either T Higgins is gone traded or this is his last year. I don't think they're going to draft Franklin, you know, in the second round and then pay T Higgins a bunch of money. I think they'll just roll with the the younger, cheaper guy. And maybe Higgins plays on the the um, franchise tag for, for a year. So I, I think by at the latest 2025, you're looking at the wide receiver too for the Bengals. At the earliest, it could be 2024, depending on what they do with Higgins. So where are you going with... Um, your next pick. Um, oops. Messed up my screen on the computer. Um, oh, man. 
No running backs yet. Still got a couple receivers. Yeah. I think I'm going to try Kian Coleman. Okay. I think I'm gonna Kian Coleman, him. he, just so you know, he was a fourth round pick. Is that all right? To the Bills in this draft? Um, yeah. No, I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Um, let me let me think about this. Um, Xavier Leggett. Yeah, I, I like Keon Coleman too. But this, you know, we got to play in the world where we're playing in, right? And he's a fourth round pick to the Bills, who did draft Lad McConkey as well. Um, so, you know, if you truly, truly believe in Keon Coleman, like you can take it. But I'm gonna, you know, Xavier Leggett is still a top forty pick in the NFL draft. He goes to the Patriots. Um, the ceiling is <clears throat> incredibly high for Leggett, right? Incredibly high. So they pair him with um, J.J. McCarthy. It's just going to depend on how they use him. If they expect him to get open on his own and create the space, I'm a little less enthusiastic about him. If they scheme him open and get him, you know, RPOs, quick slants, and he can get the ball in his hands quickly and run, then, you know, the sky is the limit for him. So that's kind of how I, I think of Leggett. Do you kind of agree with that or low floor, yeah, high I, ceiling? Yeah, I think um, that I think that explains it pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's not one of the top wide receivers, but if he joins a, a semi-established uh, wide receiver core, and stuff i think uh i think he'll do a lot better yeah i agree um which uh, uh, he didn't with the patriots but you know it, <laughs> it still can develop it, it can develop into one um i'll, I'll go with ricky Pearsall here uh slick ricky um out of florida he's an interesting one i want to get your take i want to get your take on mcconkey Pearsall and one other guy when he gets drafted um, because I feel like the, they're kind of grouped together a little bit. But we'll, we'll get to that when he is drafted. Pierre Saw goes um, second round, 55th overall to the Colts. So um, I like that spot for him. I think he complements Michael Pittman pretty well. And I think he's the number two option on that team over Josh Downs, potentially. Um, and, um, you know, Alec Pierce, of course. So I think he takes over Alec Pierce's uh, outside role. And, yeah, I, I like Ricky Pierce Saw as a – intriguing profile so still no running back are you gonna end that streak here or are you gonna take someone else yeah i think um i, th I think i would <clears throat> even though i want brooks i'm i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna lean on i think i'm i'm gonna go with with trey benson okay yeah trey benson only running back drafted in the first two rounds of this nfl mock draft Goes to the Browns, 54th overall. Do you read that as Nick Chubb is not going to be ready or is is maybe one more year is just not going to be the same? Or, or how do you read that? Well, you know, there? the Browns have been, you know, as good as Nick Chubb is, the Browns have, have been running two running backs, you know, with Kareem Hunt and there were some other guys they, they've had in there for a while mm -hmm. so um and so i think this is just adding on to whatever chubb we don't know anything about chubb you know his injury status we know we know his injury was pretty bad mm -hmm. i mean there was like meniscus and you know acl and uh, you know another another ligament or something like that so but chubb Chubb had a pretty devastating knee injury in, in college. So uh -huh. I know he's older now in the mileage, but but anyway, I, I just think this um, Trey Benson would fit in. And um, yeah, Chubb's Chubb's clock could be ticking, that's for sure, but I yeah. think I think he'll be relevant this year. It's interesting with the Browns, because this is a team they have Super Bowl aspirations, you know? They have Watson on this ridiculous contract. They bring in Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, 
you know, you got a really good offense. Your defense, you just had the defensive player of the year. You have a, a, a pretty good defense, you know, one of the better ones in the league. Like, this is a team with Super Bowl appara- uh, aspirations. So, me reading this is if they take their second round pick and take a running back, um, they think he's going to be a big part of their team this year. Or else, why are you drafting him? You know, you want to win now. So, um, Mm, tough spot here. There's one more, res- one more player, one more, res- two more receivers that have been drafted in the second round. A um, couple running backs that I really liked. I really like their spots too. Ah oh, man, this is really tough. I'm gonna take a probably a reach here. Nah, I'm gonna go with the receiver Jalen Polk out of um, Washington. Uh, I, I like him. I think he's like a fine number two receiver. He goes to the Eagles, 50th overall. So. You know, he's maybe year year one not going to produce a whole lot with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith there. But, you know, things change very quickly in the NFL. They got to pay Devontae Smith. Can they get out of A.J. Brown's contract after this year? There's a chance. Like, the whole team could kind of melt down, which is also a little scary, I guess. But um, I'll take Jalen Polk and hope by 2025 he's maybe the wide receiver too for this team. So um, you are up. Yeah, um, I think um, um, I think. Uh, let me see. Couple receivers, couple running backs, a quarterback. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Um, Good old Malachi Corley. Yeah, I like it. Last pick of the second round um, goes to the Chiefs, 64th overall. Uh, what do you expect um, from him? Just kind of like the third option on a really good team? Can he be more? Yeah, he's um, – I think he caught a, a lot of passes. Isn't he like Western Kentucky? Yeah. He was, he's uh, – he yeah, he caught a lot of passes. Yeah, he was kind of the man, the only man or something. So he just caught a, a large volume, I think, of so um you know, hopefully you know, with you know, the Rasheed Rice thing and you know and which I don't I don't think he's gonna be suspended any more than a couple of games, I guess, but I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, it could be uh there could be other facts there and stuff like that, but so they, um, I think Malachi could, uh, you know, could be fighting for a spot if he's, you know, second round receiver. I mean, these guys, we've seen a lot of guys in this position produce. What I like about it is um, he's kind of a potential gadget kind of player, slot receiver, um, manufactured touches on, on you know, thirty three percent of his. Uh, targets or catches were behind the line of scrimmage in college. Um, so he, he's kind of a little bit of a gadget player, but he's on the team that loves gadget players. So um, I like it. It, it. The question is, is he more Debo Samuel like where they're going to give him carries and line him up in the backfield? Or is he more just like Rondo Moore, which, you know, he gets a couple targets a game, a couple carries and that's it. So um, don't mind that at all. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, Again, two running backs I really like. I'll, I'll take Jonathan Brooks here. Um, goes to the Giants, third round, 70th overall. Um, you know, he tore his ACL, unfortunately, and or else he would be the number one running back in the draft class. But, you know, uh, he goes to the Giants. I think this is a decent spot. Maybe he doesn't do much the first month or so. Devin Singletary's the guy. And then by week six, we're looking at a split, essentially. And then Brooks slowly takes over is kind of how I imagine it plays out if he's ready to start the year. So um, could be getting the best running back in this draft class. I'll take it at 209. So you're back up with the 210. Are you muted? You are muted. You muted? Jeez, yeah, I'm muted. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I had to cough there for a second. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Roman Wilson here. Yeah. 
So this was the other guy I was talking about. He goes 82nd overall to the Colts. Obviously, the Colts did take Ricky Pearsall, which is funny because I was between Ricky Pearsall, Ladd McConkey, and Roman Wilson. I think a lot of guys group these players in, not not just in a vacuum of those three players, not where they're drafted or who they're drafted to. We don't know. How would you rank those three? McConkey, Pearsall, and Roman Wilson. Wow. Those those Boy, it's hard to hard to say one or two or three, but um, I think they're all. Uh, I know Roman Wilson runs like a. He's a four three. He's a four three guy, and of course he played at Michigan where they didn't throw the ball a lot. But so um, I think McConkey, Wilson, and then uh, Pearsall is. The way I would, the way I would look at it. So yeah, the reason why I asked is because a lot of people group these players together and say like these guys are slot receivers. Uh, what's their ceiling? We don't know, but they're really talented. They're going to get on the field from probably day one and, and produce for a team. I think they're a little bit more than that. I think they can play on the outside. You look at their average depth of targets; they're all like eleven plus, which isn't really indicative of a of a slot receiver. So yeah, I think I go McConkey. Pearsall Wilson, but I think they're all really close. I think McConkey um, runs a four three two. So yeah, I think Wilson and McConkey ran a four three nine. Yeah, um, and then um, Pearsall was also up there. I think he ran a four four one. So not very oh, far geez. off. Holy crap! Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. that's good speed, you know. Yeah, interesting that Pearsall and Wilson go to the Colts. I wonder if that affects them a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I'll how take, does that affect uh, like Josh Downs and all that other stuff? Oh yeah, I think yeah. yeah. I'll take Marshawn Lloyd again. I really like him. I think he's up there with my top three running backs. Like every metric, advanced metric about him is like off the charts. Breaking tackles, uh, breakaway percentage, you know, good speed. They just didn't really feature him at USC. It was the Caleb Williams show, and that's it. So. I'm happy with, with Marshawn Lloyd there, who goes to the Raiders, 77th overall. They're going to run the hell out of the ball. Even if he's not, doesn't lead that team in carries, he's still going to get 180, 200 carries maybe. Like, they're going to run the ball a lot. So, um, especially with potentially a rookie quarterback in, in Penix. So, you're back up to round out the second round. Wow. Wow took my dude last time so um <laughs> still a qb a third round two third round qbs actually yeah i think um i think i'm gonna go with rattler spencer rattler the qb don't hate it a qb if you hit on a qb in the last pick of the second round you're ecstatic in a in a one key uh sorry a super flex league so 80 81st of the seahawks so sitting for a year, most likely, right? Do you see him potentially winning the job in, in 2025 if he's the real deal? Yeah, I mean, that's that'd be a perfect situation that he could sit, you know, behind Gino. That would be, you know, three years with Gino, uh, Seahawks. And, you know, I think maybe, maybe they've hit the ceiling with him and, you know, they want... They want to move forward with another another QB, so I I could see that, you yeah. know, if uh, Rattler he, if he gets to sit and learn and stuff like that. Guy played enough college football, I think he knows what he's doing, and um, you know he just needs a little refinement in some areas. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He has the arm, man. He maybe has the best arm in this draft class, um, but you know people judge him a lot because he was a. 17 year old on a netflix show and we're all kind of stupid when we're 17 it's just we don't have a, a camera in our face right so um, well, geez, think, you know yeah all the uh, everybody's looking for the next uh the next thing and, and of course when he was at oklahoma you know he was labeled he was labeled as you know he's going to be a first round draft pick in the nfl and and that lasted about five games four or five games at oklahoma before a guy named Caleb Williams came in and took over for him. So But he matured and and yeah, I think he's if they're drafting him in the third round, in my opinion, even 
they remember they have Gino. They also traded for Sam Howell. If they're drafting Rattler in the third round, they, they he has a chance to be their guy, in my opinion. So, and he will have a chance in 2025. Uh, so I like that pick for sure. That's where I was going to go next. Um, third round, we'll kind of talk through these guys a little bit quicker. You know, this the first two rounds, these names you see here, I'd be very surprised if most of these guys aren't in the first two rounds of your dynasty rookie drafts. Maybe give her, you know, maybe a couple of names fall in or fall out. But for the most part, these are the guys that are going to be in the second round um, in the first two rounds of your dynasty rookie drafts. Now we get to the point where it really is going to depend on, on draft capital and, and where they go. So we'll talk through them a little quicker. Um, I'll take Javon Baker out of um, UCF. I wasn't very high on him when I, when I watched him, but I, every mock I see has him as a second or third rounder. So I have to kind of respect what the NFL scouts and GMs are saying as well. Like if they have him as a second or third rounder, then I'm going to have to potentially take him in the second or third round of my dynasty rookie drafts. He goes to the lions 73rd overall. There's a, there's a, there's a path for him to be the wide receiver too for the lions a really good offense. So I'll, I'll take him there. <coughs> you are up next. Yeah. Um, Geez, here's where I start uh, diving deep, I guess, with some guys. Uh, now you can reach a little bit, right? Yeah, I think you so. Want. You know, you got to look at what team they're um, they're drafted by, and you know, are they gonna, you know? And that's why uh, here I go. You know, Blake Blake Quorum. You know, to the Chargers. Chargers, and uh, I know he's pretty. He's, uh, geez, I think he's a fourth rounder on our mock draft. So, third, four. I think he's a fifth rounder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but still, um, I mean, running yeah. backs, fifth round, it can happen. This is a, this is a volume running back, and, um, you know, not super sexy, you know, 4.3 yards per carry. And, um, but my God, he carried the ball a lot. So he would, him, him and Gus Edwards in the backfield there for the chargers, you know, with the running game and stuff like that, I might, might look pretty good. No, I like it. I like it. Again, it's good to point out, like, this is the area of your rookie draft where reach for guys you really like. If you loved tank Dell last year but you're like oh i need to take all second round receivers first and then i can take tank Dell. you lost out if you loved puka nakua but it's like oh he's a fifth rounder i'm gonna wait you lost out right take take a little bit of a reach all these guys are kind of dart throws at this point they're they're late day two or day three nfl draft picks they're dynasty rookie third round picks go with the guys you really love or the situations you love pour them with the chargers again is going to touch the ball his rookie year 180 plus times like so you're gonna get pr production there for sure um yeah i'll go with a guy i really like um another washington receiver jalen mcmillan oh good uh, choice I think, I think third round yeah i i really like him a lot um i think he's like the perfect wide receiver too for a team he goes to the jags 96th overall so he has that opportunity to be kind of the wide receiver too for that team so uh, I'll take him there. I like his landing spot. I like the player. So you're a backup. I think I want to. Um, I think Keon Coleman here would be. Yeah. Uh, I know I tried to reach for him a little bit before. Um, I've I've seen him mocked higher. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, again, just a word of caution, just, you know, you can find a mock draft to suit your, your, uh, scratch your, your itch on where you think guys can go, but now's the time to be looking at some reputable guys, you know, mock drafters, you know, Mel Kuyper, kind of, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. Daniel Jeremiah and stuff like that, guys who, who do this stuff for a living and, um, even uh, even I listened to um, the Fox uh, analysis guy Joel Klatt, mm -hmm. you know who does the college games because he sees these players. So, but a lot of people love everybody. You know they don't want to say anything negative. But so just 
just do, yeah. try and do your homework, and that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, Keon Coleman, you know, he's a fourth-round pick, 101st overall to the Bills. So there's a there's a path for him to be the wide receiver one, to be honest. Like, uh, I know he's a fourth-round pick, and I think he drafted <laughs> Lad, Lad McConkey, but um, I would say, like, Keon Coleman – you know, like there's a path for him to be the wide receiver one for the Bills next year. If Absolutely. He's legit. So, yeah, I, I like that for sure. Um, Again, I'll go with another guy that I really like um, or uh, that I'm intrigued by. I don't know how much I like him, but um, Malik Washington. Um, geez, where is he on this list? There he is. Um, he goes, <laughs> couldn't find him. He goes to the um, Steelers. In the end of the third round, and not a lot of people talking about like the Steelers are a decent spot for a receiver to fall to. Like I don't see ever a, uh, the Steelers taking a receiver twentieth overall. Who do they have outside of George Pickens? We went over the um, the depth chart. It's it's Van Jefferson as their wide receiver too. Yeah, and it's they, not like it, it's not like they have a stud tight end to be their second. They have Fryermuth who's nice, but it's like Pickens and no one else. So they're a sneaky spot for a receiver. They didn't take what anyone in this um, in this mock draft until Malik Washington. So he's intriguing. He had a monster monster year at Virginia. You know he played at um, Northwestern, uh, went to Virginia, and was almost fifty percent of their passing offense, almost fifty percent, which is insane. So he put up a monster season. He's a fun fun player. He can kind of do it all. Maybe he's just a slot guy, but. The path's there for him to be the wide receiver, too. So I'll take a chance there. You are back up. Okay. So um, I want to take um, – is Tez Walker, is he the guy – he's like 23 years old, played five years of college football, and and really broke out last year. Is that the guy? Uh, Devontae Walker, he um, – three years. He, he was uh, the Kent State to North Carolina. Um, never really had a monster season, but he okay. was he was the main guy for Drake May there uh, last Yeah, time. okay. I, I want to draft him. You know, yeah. te- don't, don't they call him Tez or, or – Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tez Walker. Yeah, in this, in this draft he goes to the Chargers, 105th. So um, – Another again. chance to get in get into the mix. Uh, sure. Because your the wide receiver core isn't the best. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'll go back all the way. Actually, the highest guy on our board. He is a top. You know, he went 65th overall. Jermaine Burton. Again, he's Alabama. He was Georgia and Alabama. So nice, nice for him to play for those two teams. He um, he has some intriguing analytical stuff. But he was literally just the deep threat all every year at college. Like he averaged over 15 yards. His average depth of target last year, not his average um, yards per reception, his depth of target was over 20, which is insane. The next highest is like his was 20.2. I think the next highest was 15.8 or something. We're talking about the average depth that his means his average pass went 20 yards in the air. Uh, he only he didn't drop any passes last year, which is cool to see. I mean, he only had like 40 or 50 targets, but I uh, didn't drop any. So is he just a deep threat? Maybe. And if he is, he's probably not going to be very valuable for fantasy, but can he develop into more? Potentially. So he goes to the Panthers. We'll see. I like it for Bryce Young more than anything. So I'll take a chance there. You're back up. So um, looking for uh who are you looking for yeah i don't know um i'm gonna go with the <clears throat> jerry rice's son and uh, brendan rice you know um mm-hmm. usc wide receiver and i think he would kind of fit right about now yep yeah, goes to the 49ers um third round pick right first second, yeah. third round pick would it be crazy to say he's their wide receiver too in 2025? That's right. So um, things change, yeah. you know. Dynasty, you got to look. Sometimes you got to look long term. So yeah, especially in the third round, he he's one of those like he doesn't do anything 
off the charts, but he's just kind of good at everything. He's decent speed, really good route runner, can catch the ball in traffic. Like, um, goes to the 49ers. That's the offense you want to be on. Yeah, I don't think it's. I His think old man was, I think, was a second round uh, draft pick, and he was not considered very fast. You know, I think he came from Mississippi Valley State and and stuff like that. And uh, let's. Let's think about what he did. He is only the greatest wide receiver we've seen, you know, modern, yeah. modern era. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'll take Braylon Allen here. I, he went to the Packers, which I don't love, obviously, with Josh Jacobs getting a big contract with them. But they did use a lot of like Aaron Jones and, and AJ Dillon. So, like, is Braylon Allen just a better AJ Dillon? I hope so. You know, obviously, he, he's, he has the size to be the workhorse. So if he does get the opportunity, he'll be the uh, he will be the workhorse. But anyway, so I'll, I'll take Braylon Allen, third third round pick to the Packers. You got uh, second to last pick for you. Okay, so um, there's still a lot think, of time. Uh, here. I think um, I think running back Jalen Wright. Is where Dang, yeah. that was my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went to the uh Texans fourth round, right? Or yeah, yeah. Like last end of the fourth round. Do you expect him uh, not to do much in 2024 with Mixon there and then maybe take over? Um, yeah, beyond. they still got well, they still got Damian Pierce, so yeah. um, who they don't really like. All it takes is one injury, you know, one. Oh, yeah. One hamstring, one calf, one ankle, one knee, you know. And somebody's getting carries, and all of a sudden they look really good, and and they're riding them into the playoffs or something like that, you know. So, now, Honestly, Jalen Wright was putting up, like, his advanced stat. He was, one, I mean, he was kind of like Marshawn Lloyd. wasn't used a whole lot at Tennessee, which I feel like Tennessee does that a lot with the running backs, like Kamara. Um but, you know, he ran a 4.38. You know, he has good size. He can catch the ball pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely like that pick a lot. Um, yeah. Just trying to see who I who I want. I mean, kind of crazy. There's still third-round picks here. We're at the end of the Dynasty rookie third round. Um, no one really I want in the third round. There's a couple tight ends and, and uh, a quarterback to the Cowboys, which – I don't know. I don't know what that means, really. I guess I'll go a guy I want to shed some light on is Nia Smith. He had some, like, legal issues, I believe. Um, Texas A&M, he has a running back background. He started off as a running back, and you can see that in his play. He's um, he's kind of a sleeper for me. Like, if there's anyone I'm talking about that's a potential, like, you know, end of the dynasty third round, rookie draft third round or, or fourth round pick that could hit, it is him because of his versatility. So um, I like him. Hopefully he matures. Goes to the Commanders, which, you know, isn't a terrible spot considering they, they drafted Jaden Daniels second overall. So you are up. Yeah, I'm going to um, – I don't necessarily like what team this guy is – mocked to but um you know it seems like he was the number two tight end and um uh, he's way down on our mock draft list yeah uh jatavian sanders um you know he's texas tight end and um between him and the running back and the two wide receivers that are coming out of texas these guys were the offense and stuff and you know so, I, I, you know, I know he's. I got. A, they got a mock to the Ravens, and I know they got Likely and Andrews there already. So, but um, you know, Tough receiving. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I got to think of slightly a little long term. You know, yeah. It's, it, this is the first mock draft where I didn't see him go as like the, white, the tight end two, and he went all the way in the fifth round. I was very surprised by that. Like, why is he all the way down there? Every mock has him. Tight end two, second or third round. Some even in the first round. So it's just everyone sees things differently, I guess. I expect him to go day two. Um, 
at the worst. So yeah, I don't hate that. Um, so yeah, that's that's our three round rookie mock draft. We're again maybe one or two more of these before we get real landing spots, which is nice. Still some guys out there like that you can take shots on in the fourth round. Um, you know, like Luke McCaffrey goes to the Broncos. He could be like the new Taysom Hill for them. I, I like him. Yeah. Um, you know, Bucky Irving, I really like. He just got bad draft capital. He went to the Jags, which you could see him being the guy maybe in year two. Um, Dylan Lobb, Lobby Lobb uh, to the Rams. You know, he was New Hampshire's entire offense. So Isaiah Davis is a guy that I've been hearing a lot of people talk about as a sleeper. He went to I think, South Dakota or North Dakota State. Um, so, um, you know, I've heard a lot of people talking about him. Uh, South Dakota State. Um, so, yeah, there's potentially still value in the fourth round if you have a fourth round. So. Andrick oh. Estamine, even though he's a big, big running back out of Notre Dame. I know he ran – didn't run very good in the uh, – I think he ran a 4.6 or something like that. Four, seven. He's, a big, he's a big boy, like in 230s and – 4.71. Yeah. Yeah. 4.71? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's um, – Yeah. But he did go to the, yeah. yeah, he went to the Panthers, so um, you know, there's a chance there. But that's it for our three round dynasty rookie superflex mock draft. And uh we will be back again with another one or two before the uh NFL draft. So we will catch you guys then.